Likewise, Toyota Bulls post game live coming up between the two best teams record wise in the Eastern Conference. The Miami Heat come out victorious 112 99 down in Miami. This is NBC Sports Chicago. Welcome into our downtown Chicago studios. And this is what's happened. And this is the conversation that's going to happen yeah. for the foreseeable future until it gets fixed. Two and nine versus the top six teams in the Eastern Conference. Four and six versus the top six teams in the West. O for 11 versus teams with a 615 winning percentage or higher. Welcome in to Toyota Bulls Post Game Live. I'm Jason Goff alongside my teammates, Kendall Gill, Will Purdue. Guys, we were jacked about this game going into it. Uh, a fully healthy Bulls team is what we've been talking about, and wait till these guys get back together. But that's not the case right now. You go into it with what you got. I thought the Bulls had enough to win tonight, just getting off to that tough start and the stagnation in the offense that we've seen over these last few games. Yeah, we said in the pregame that DeMar and Zach were going to have to get rid of the basketball quickly because of the defense that the Miami Heat play. They blitz the screen and rolls mm -hmm. when you get close to your spot you saw a number of times every time DeMar got close to 15 feet and in they sent two and three guys at him and, and they stayed down and, too and, and they, they, they down. didn't go for the pump right fakes. they didn't go right, for the pump right, face right. or anything like that and you heard Will say earlier that the assist numbers kind of skewed because you know they had 23 yeah. assists to finish up the night but really they those assists came late they really didn't matter at that time yeah, they only had 15 at the end of the third when they were down 24. And so we've, we've talked about how Zach and DeMar are a luxury because of their ability to score points in bunches. But when you play a team as good as Miami that really uh, hangs their hat on their defense mm -hmm. and a style of physical play that very few teams can match, you have an idea of what they're going to do. As Kendall talked about, they're going to blitz, they're going to rush, they're going to look to take the ball out of DeMar's hands, out of Zach's hands, and, and really make them earn their points. And that's where you were hoping the other guys would be able to step up. But the interesting thing was we got so sloppy with the basketball early on. And we had eight turnovers in the first quarter. And, and some of them, I thought, were unforced errors. Yeah, and live ball turnovers, too. Which it, it, it was almost like, okay, these guys know the help is coming. And it forced them to play faster than they wanted to and led to turnovers. But, you know, listen, they did a nice job in the second quarter of kind of gathering themselves and getting themselves back into the game. But that doesn't mean Miami's going to go away. They just kept pushing and kept pushing. And I, I wrote something down here at the end of the third. There's a physical style of play that the really good teams consistently play that the Bulls haven't been able to match. And the one thing we got to be careful of is just because when Ball and Caruso come back doesn't mean that's just going to change like that. Because Billy's even talked about how you just can't flip the switch. Yeah, you got to relearn it, those teammates too. When it comes to that aspect. And that's why I keep harping on, you know, we still have to work on our style of play regardless of, you know, who's out on that floor. Yeah, defensively, KG, uh, when you see this Miami Heat team and you played in this system. Right. And, I mean, they... <laughs> There's a certain style of play that they have. There's a certain body type that they want on that roster. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot has been made of the heat culture, but you're talking about BMI stuff and all mm -hmm. the things that you have to adhere to. Right. This is a well-oiled, disciplined defensive machine, and when you got an anchor like Bam Adebayo, it's very easy to see why they're so communicative and also mm -hmm. so connected on the defensive end. Right, you said it's, it's a well-oiled machine, and what you have to do when I played in this system, the when we had problems defensively, it was on the second or third pass. And because we would, we would, we would lock the, the, the initial pass up, also the guy dribbling the basketball, we would lock him up. But it was the second and third guy that we had problems with, and particularly when the second or third guy caught the pass and drove the ball to the basket. You saw the Bulls do that a couple times, but never went back to it consistently. If they had done that, this game would have been a lot easier because it would have pulled the Miami Heat out of those double and triple teams. Is it personal film study if that's the case too? Because if the doubles are coming from the low side or from the high side or the opposite side, we saw them doubling from mm -hmm. different angles throughout the night. And instead of guessing where that's going to come from or just reading and reacting, is this something that, Will, that you could you know, have it going into this game knowing, okay, this is where it's going to come from early on, this is where it's going to come from later, you just have to read and react? 
You just have to read and react. I mean, you kind of have an idea, but that's one of the things that makes Miami so good. A lot of teams can't play with the complexity that they play with. You know, as you just mentioned, Jason, they, I, I specifically remember in that first quarter, they blitzed and doubled from three different areas. Mm -hmm. But that's about communication. That's about repetition and practice. That's just, that's about a comfort level and communication. You know, you made a point about, uh, you know, Bam and a bio on the backside, even about how they've really done an excellent job of making Deadman coming off the yeah. bench. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to, there's not, there's not a, a, a horrific drop off in defense at the big man position when he comes in. He had a couple blocks tonight, I believe. As well. But his ability now, to just to, the, the physicality of which he plays with, the confidence that he plays with, that he didn't have with, you know, with other teams. And that's what's also the mental toughness that that organization demands, but also helps build up. And, 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 you know, the next time we play the Heat or, or a team that doubles and triple teams you, mm -hmm. if, if you're DeMar, Okay, and if you're Zach, you got to know, okay, I'm not scoring 30 tonight. I got to give it up. I got to give it up early because I know that they are coming after me. Once I give it up, I know that we have the advantage. I'm going to use another boxing analogy here. The Bulls did not counterpunch the Miami Heat, okay? The, the Miami Heat punched them with their defense, but the Bulls never came up with a counterpunch. Did, did one time. Yeah. Uh, but 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 it was too late and never got into an offensive rhythm s simply because we held the basketball too long. Yeah, forcing the team to stop feeling good about double teaming is where you have to get it. Yeah, and then, and then they become and then, apprehensive. Right. Okay, right. and then, then the, the, the double teams aren't, aren't so strong. You saw the Miami Heat, they were like, oh, please, uh, yeah. please dribble it, DeMar. I'm, we, we're going to come at you with the triple but team. But one of the things that even you talked about, and this is, and this is one of those things that, you know, the, the NBA is a copycat league. Mm -hmm. You can go back and look at that film and look about, hey, guys, this is, you know, this is how we need to play. These are the things that we need to do. Because yep. we even talked about it, the, 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 how they would pre-rotate mm -hmm. so that when Zach or DeMar at times would pass out of the double team, they had already pre-rotated. So they were there at Io, at Kobe, as they caught the ball. The defender was there. So that's about the pre-rotation, but they're also talking on the backside as those guys come out of the double, pointing out where those guys to go. But that's also, you know, a repetition, uh, you know, guys knowing each other's strengths and weaknesses. And we do have a lot of new faces, but I think that it's just we keep going back to that physicality aspect, to that mental toughness that, you know, we have to continually get better. And I think that they'll, when they go back and look at this film tomorrow, they'll see that. And, then, you know, basketball IQ. What I would do to the Miami Heat is this, and it's, it's simple. A lot, a lot of people don't think that it's that, it, that, it, that it's hard to do it, but all you you hold the basketball above your head, you pump, you just do a pump fake, but you don't pass it. Defense. You watch the defense go pre-rotate, then you throw, you skip pass it over to the guy over in the corner with the open jump shot. You know, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because while Will was talking about, it, I was thinking of the instance where Kobe White on a pick and roll who didn't give it to Vooch because they they immediately started to move and pre-rotate towards Vooch, mm -hmm. and he caught Derrick Jones Jr. on that baseline Caught cut. Right, yeah. exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All you got to do is do like this, the defense will move, then you throw it right there to the open man for the jump shot. Yeah, not getting that's sped it. up, not getting too yeah. hurried, and that's exactly what that yeah. defense wants you to do. A guy who's a part of that defense and a guy who's been absolutely on fire when he sees the Chicago Bulls is a ConcreteIL.com player of the game, a member of the Nigerian National Olympic team, Gabe Vincent. Hi, yeah, yeah, Gabe Vincent. I mean, when the Bulls see him, yeah. this man is going for 20 for some reason or another. <laughs> yeah, I, he went for 20 tonight. Yeah, and look, he, he played really well against us Tough here player. in Chicago. And, you know, he's one of those guys that you don't hear about, but will silently kill you, yeah. man. And he, he has been playing great against the Bulls all year long. Oh, he uh -huh. gave DeMar the DeMar. <laughs> <laughs> A little step through action for yeah. Dave. Yeah. But it, was, it was the one thing that you saw that... <laughs> And this is the problem now with the schedule and, the, and how many games and how many days. And you know, we got to find some time to get out on the floor to get back to working on the screen roll. You saw the Steven Adams, Ja Morant screen roll picked us apart. Yeah. Tonight, whether it was Duncan Robinson, whether it was Island. Vincent, whether it was Hero, they were doing an excellent job of screening, rescreening. You know, that's it's where we got to get back to you know, the basics as far as what are we going to do. And, Kendall, you talked about it. 
you know, I, I think that we need to mix it up a little bit, and, and I think sometimes we're becoming too predictable on defense, and now yeah. teams are working that to their advantage. Yeah, big time. Yeah, and, and a guy who needs to get it going offensively, there were times tonight where Vooch might have had the matchup, and they, he was found, I think, twice, where Stacy pointed out, I was like, it's that easy, but, Will, you thought that there were more instances tonight where when he gets that deep post position, he's got well, I mean, he, even when Bam and Abaya was guarding, that's 6'9", against seven feet. I mean, look how that time, because they switch. You know, he buries Jimmy Butler right there, and Butler realizes there's nothing I can do. But look how he works, all right? He pens the guy. He asks for the ball. They get it to him. But that's Chris passes around the perimeter. Look at this. They switch again. He does an excellent job. Nice job by Zach. But what did Zach do to get the defense to commit? He pumped it. He, he faked the pass. Yeah. Then he made the pass. Nice. And then again, you get the ball here. He just backs him down. That's just, listen, too big, too good right there. That's against Adebayo. And I thought that because of the success he has early, you just ride that horse, man, because yeah. that's one of the things that sometimes, you know, you, Chip Schaefer, who's still with the Bulls, was, was there when we were winning the championships, used to talk about, you know, sometimes too smart is dumb. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And if a guy is, has that advantage, just keep going to him and going to him. Because then eventually, that's the, the one thing the Miami Heat will do to break his rhythm, they'll foul him. Mm -hmm. And what that'll do is give Vooch time to regroup, go to the free throw line, gather his breath, and then go back down and go at him again. And then eventually they'll call timeout and they'll make some changes, and then that's when you adapt. We got a lot more to come here on Toyota Bulls Post Game Live. The Bulls drop a tough one to the Miami Heat, 112 to 99, when we return.